Welcome back to yet another YouTube video. It is your golden way and there's absolutely no way without going through the way and we believe that Jesus Christ is the way and he is the only way. But, not but, <laughs> I meant to say welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to your another video. Finally doing a sit down. This is, I'm shooting this like on the 29th of August. Uh, I literally just cleaned my entire room because I've had literally four days of just like straight busyness I didn't have time for anything things were everywhere I didn't even cook for the past four days I didn't cook the entire last week actually I didn't make okay I did make food but like it was just for like one night and that was it and that's just the necessary information that I'm telling you but I'm so exhausted and then I was about to remove my makeup and I was just like actually I went was on a solo day yesterday and I wrote down this is actually very itchy today I'm taking it off I'm not gonna sleep with it because it's so so but I'm gonna take it off today like the other days I've been sleeping with it because I needed it in the morning to be late and stuff like that which I still had to redo but then since I've already cut it today and stuff like that I think it's gonna be a-okay for me to just skip on um, yeah unnecessary information but for those that click on this video for exactly what I'm going to discuss I am so excited that God really set me down and said let's talk about this so I obviously had plans I tried making plans with most of my friends but most people were writing today and yeah that was tough and everybody in my degree we are just busy with course work we're busy with research so I spent my birthday doing research like the entire day and then I think um, our meeting that was supposed to be like an hour long became two hours with my group but we did a lot of work in like two hours and then I was getting ready while in the meeting if you watch the vlog you would know all of this content but that's besides the point and besides the fact but yeah I keep saying but because my brain is thinking slower because I'm tired but <laughs> yeah so um yeah let's just jump straight into today's video so the Lord really inspired me to just go on a solid date and really celebrate this day and really spend this time with him so I took my Bible took everything with me and I went to Chiang and Bean because they also gave me like a free cappuccino and uh, what do you call this thing a cake because I have like a, they are what do you call thing loyalty like N as you pay as you end um, it's, it's like a card but it's an app it's so cool I like it it's like McDonald's that's why I eat so much McDonald's because McDonald's gives me free free things well cheap thing not free but yeah that's besides the point they really have an amazing black like, breakfast range I love their breakfast range it's one of my favorite coffee shops so yeah the Lord really saying let's sit down and talk about 21 lessons that you have learned in 21 years I wrote it in my new I'm trying to make it focus my new journal but anyway you can't see outside it's written victory and it is I think okay I said this in the what is what, what do you call it in the unwrapping video my 21st birthday was really a 21st birthday weekend because yo I am so tired but today is a Tuesday and it's gonna be a good day and there's a lot that the Lord wants to do and I'm incredibly excited for it so I wrote it down so I'm just gonna go through the entire list I might add in a couple of stuff there and there but not everything oh cuz I'm so exhausted okay let's let's start with number one there is nothing that you can do that God can't do for you and I think this was one of my toughest lessons to learn um, because I grew up very independent still am and God is just really like that's that's the, that's that's my biggest fight with God really like control uh, and um, just yeah that's my biggest fight with God and I've learned that I've learned to trust God more now than before where I can really just step into the unknown with nothing in my hands with no plan C plan D I just go with plan A which is trust God and yeah that's something that I think when you the sooner you learn it the better um, and then number two is surrender is better than sacrifice and because I always consistently fight with God I have come to a point of learning that when I surrender it's better and it's nicer because I don't have to sacrifice anything uh, unnecessarily and the, the, the third one is similar um, 
just as much as surrender is better than sacrifice so is obedience better than sacrifice because when you obey God you risk the unnecessary sacrifice I feel like the part of sacrifice is just that sacrifice is always going to be there it's never just going to disappear you are always going to have to sacrifice your time your energy your uh, money like there's always going to be something that needs you to sacrifice for but if God says something and you are being disobedient you are continuously depleting um, one of one aspect that you're supposed to be using and that is unwarranted sacrifice it's like you are sacrificing unnecessarily because God really didn't ordain that sacrifice and that's something I've really learned through just going through the Old Testament and just reading the books of the Old Testament that sacrifice is such a very important thing and I think it was Samuel that said this and I love it so much because obedience is better than sacrifice um, yeah and then number four is that the love I get and intimacy I share with God can never be replicated by any of my relationships. This one is a massive one um, because I generally used to think that um, in a marriage that that person is supposed to give you the love that Jesus because I mean that's what they're instructed to do and I feel like because of that I tend to have an unrealistic expectation of love in a relationship like romantically and even with my friends sometimes I overly expect them to just know and do things in this particular way and God has really been teaching me especially through the love is devotional that I was doing in the love conference like supernatural love conference like I mean beautiful conference it was just all incredible and just God was just really reaffirming and trying to teach me that I cannot expect the intimacy and love that I share with him with any other person because that is special between me and him and that's what makes our like that's what makes his love for us so special because it is the only love that's so different it's it's the only love that can fully satisfy us without us lacking anything or wanting more uh, i mean or wanting anything outside of it so yeah that's something i really really grasped in the season um I don't know if you can tell that I'm exhausted guys even my voice sounds exhausted I'm still shocked that I didn't get sick well I'm not shocked because I prayed for it and then number five um, is that friendship is one of the strongest ones on the earth so I have really like th through healing of my breakup I really learned a lot about how much friendship is such a valuable aspect of every single person's life so like every single relationship the foundation should be friendship that's what my God taught me because um, unfortunately in the previous relationship I was in that wasn't the case like it wasn't like he was my friend first he was my boyfriend first and then we learned to be friends which I don't think should be the case and I think that's something that that is one of the biggest lessons I learned from the relationship as well is that um, friendships are really strong because I've realized how much I go the mile for my friends like I do the same things for my friends and they do the same thing for me and I'm just like it doesn't make sense because like in my head I always thought like a romantic relationship is so powerful it's so great it's so magnificent but then just coming to the, that realization that it's not that as significant my back is so sore so I think I'm just gonna flip back and sit like this yeah and it's not that like significant and I think that it's one of those things where you learn that love is such a like God is interesting and I learned this even like through scripture just reading the Bible that like Jesus pursues friendship with us he pursues um, and it's interesting that's the kind of relationship he emphasizes the most and it's this brother and sister this um, sisterhood brotherhood family siblings that kind of love like it, it's based on friendship as well like it's so interesting because I saw it in the way that like yeah it's just I can say a lot about this I literally can say a lot about this um, I can't see myself anymore because a little bit far so if you if if I go out of um, not frame like if you see me what's the word I'm looking for if I go out of focus just listen to what I'm saying I'm hoping that the, the camera can still hear me because like the mic doesn't work my camera okay unnecessary complaint but like 
yeah the last time i put the mic on the camera it doesn't work but then like other mics do work like the mic works on my laptop but it doesn't work on my camera it's it's something else but anyway um let's go to number six love is not hard when reciprocated and this is one of the most interesting lessons i've learned because I struggled a lot with trying to find acceptance for people and trying to like for a very long time and then God really just oh, in one moment he just gave me a new heart beautiful was incredible like once I figure out how to do a live guys I'm definitely gonna do that live hopefully by the time this video comes out I've already done the live because like there's so many other videos that need to come out um, because yeah I need to edit a lot of videos like this week one of the videos needs to come out so i'm probably going to be editing tomorrow but that's besides the point um yeah number seven his family will always be there for you no matter what i feel like that's straight to the point number eight is a church community is the family you are adopted into in faith and this is so important because i'm away from home and everything you saw on my get ready with me like every single aspect this is so incredible god is so good every single aspect of my birthday every single person every single gift every single sacrifice that every single person made to show up and be there like we waited for an hour like there's no way like i, I can stop saying like there's no way that people that do not love you will not wait that long like they <laughs> it was it was such a mind-blowing experience because they didn't complain they didn't like they just sat and they they waited and they made time and it was so interesting to just be around them because there was more concern about how i was feeling am i okay like everything was just like this is your day we are going to focus on you and that's something i don't like regularly experience and I'm usually like the one that carries the weight because even with the planning for my birthday I planned it all by myself and then they were just like you should have shared with us we could have done this we could have done this we could have done whatever and I'm just like yeah you could have but right now we're in a little bit tight situation and even just like the whole damage control situation was so incredible like ugh, I love my church family like the, the people that did my makeup the person that did my hair my nails church 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 all of them like faith because the other person like the nails and the hair um she goes to crc and then the people that did my makeup they come to my church so it's just that whole thing that it's not just specific to only my church but it's like in faith in general like the body of christ like as christians we look out for one another and when you are adopted into that family you are adopted into that as well and yeah i think i've explained enough and then number nine is that the great pleasure uh, the greatest pleasure is being in the will of God. I love this so much because it's linked once again to obedience. I feel like that's the massive part. Like you will notice that the first top 10 are going to be a lot about like your spiritual health and your spiritual growth because I do sincerely believe that your, your, your spirit self has such great power and influence over your mind, body and soul. So if you do not feed your spirit self, there is no way that you are going to be in the path of where you're supposed to be and I think like with me all these years like because I started actively following my faith like more on a personal relational level in grade no not grade I was done with matric I was like in like high school I was okay with the Lord but I was very lukewarm in high school so like after matric like when I was alone now there was so much dependency because there was nobody else that I could hang on to in terms of faith in terms of trusting like there was just God was just like I need you and I need you alone and I think that's something that we need to pursue and once you're pursuing that and you're pursuing God's will for your life there is such a peace there is such a clarity that nothing in this entire world can ever replace or you know like yeah like nothing in this world can ever really make you satisfied and make you so happy like your flesh self like and i say greatest pleasure is because i want to relate it to the flesh like the flesh really likes pleasure and it enjoys being happy and fun and i've really found great pleasure in pursuing the will of god 
even when it's not what I want like my flesh doesn't want it but my spirit desires it so there is those moments where like they're butting heads and it's a very interesting fight and then the more I go deeper and I just go further like I push towards the Lord the more I'm learning and it's just pulling me and pulling me and I get this excitement because I know that God is about to open up a certain route for me to follow and I will know where to go because I know God's gonna speak I know God's gonna say something he won't leave me like in the dark for too long and honestly he doesn't uh, yeah and then uh, number 10 is quite similar to number nine uh, is, is that seeking God's presence over recognition leads to uh, great satisfaction so seeking the presence of God over being recognized for your actions or being appreciated for your actions brings great satisfaction because you are seeking God's approval above man's approval and I feel like the scripture that I studied on my birthday was uh, Samuel um, 16 which is like when David was anointed to be king and our pastor preached on it and said like this house is anointed and it's just so interesting that God like took me back and said like read David's story and I know that scripture so much because I've read that scripture so much like David is one of my favorite biblical characters so I've really like been in there I've done that I've like I think I've read multiple times and it's been preached multiple times and like each time there's like revelation on revelation on revelation each time and that's like such an incredible thing but genuinely God's approval is always going to be way more important than men's approval um, absolutely there's never going to be a time where what God wants for your life and what he desires of you is better than what the world desires of you because the world will always depreciate you and God will always pour into you so yeah that's something I've learned and then number 11 is that you must surround yourself with wise counsel um, and by wise counsel I feel it's important to have different generations of counsel um, I like I remember like a lot of people always come and speak into this when they talk to me where it's like you have a lot of voices speaking over your life and I'm like okay what do you mean and usually it's because I have different generations of voices speaking over my life and I never really used to understand why but then I used to ask the Lord and God would give me names and I have names of specific ladies and like he's like genuinely say talk to this person about this and that person about that and that person about that and obviously like there's a certain level of confidentiality that I'm keeping with all of them and the level of privacy that I'm keeping with myself and God and just like accountability on various aspects of different things and all of that but I know there is like one specific woman where it's like she is like this certain aspect of my life and will always be like the all all around aspect of my life because God has really like put in her heart to mentor me and for me to be under her so it's things like that where God has spoken about certain things and you need to keep yourself in wise counsel and surrounding yourself with wise counsel will always mean people of faith I do not think that the wise counsel God means in Proverbs is like just smart people like you can be surrounded by smart people that are spiritually dead you need to be surrounded by smart people that are spiritually mature and alive and on fire because they will like when fire and fire comes together it catches flame and it becomes more stronger and more ignited and that's something that you want for yourself and something that you want to surround yourself with because when you have that counsel they like decision making is so much easier because you have a, a wealth of wisdom and not just your own discernment and your own accord because sometimes that can lead you astray like I have experienced that in multiple occasions where my own emotions came in the way of my decisions and affected how everything else came about but yeah that's a bit of two piece sense about why you need to surround yourself with wise counsel and then um, number 12 is that you are responsible for your own life very simple like you are responsible for you uh, and you cannot blame people for what happens to you even when people are people's decisions you know affect you <laughs> you can't blame them it's still your responsibility to take hold and take ownership of what your role was in hurting yourself or allowing yourself to get hurt because 
every single thing that people do as much as we would like to think it's isolated from what we do it is not i've learned that and i think that once you learn that you take great responsibility of what you've done what you have not done because sometimes it's really what you have not done it's never really what you've done sometimes it's things that you don't do that negatively impact you so for example um if you don't exercise and then all of a sudden you are at the hospital with a heart attack heart disease or whatever um the consequence of that is not just the devil is trying to attack you sometimes it's generally just you're not taking responsibility of your life you're not taking care of your temple and your temple is your body and it's things like that man and it's just simple basic stuff you know and then number 13 similar to number 12 is your choice will always affect you and they all have consequences so all the decisions you make have consequences I remember I once discussed this with somebody like, no, we're living in a new dispensation of faith where like all our sins are washed away, like like nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yes, nothing can definitely separate us from the love of God. But at the same time, remember the character of God. God is a just God. That means that justice will always happen. And what is justice? Fair distribution. And what fair distribution means is that there's a consequence to every action. It might not be as severe as it would have been without Christ, but it's going to happen because that experience of the consequence of your sin. Because for example, like a good example of this, like to show you justice, I know it's, 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 it's to me, I think it's a good example. Um, if you have premarital sex and you somehow make a child, and the child comes out and the child is born like that is a consequence of your action that is a consequence of your decision that is a consequence of your sin and that's like a more practical example but then sometimes these little tiny examples such as like oh today maybe i might have like i it was a little lie but that little lie was <laughs> was a, like it made a big impact in the big story about something like okay, that, okay scratch that example i'm tired my brain not thinking anymore let's just go back to the list so number 14 is dreaming keeps you inspired keep dreaming like honestly keep aspiring for more because the more you're like i want this for myself i want this life i want this god and this is what i desire and commit to the lord oh my word commit to the lord commit everything to god and it will make all the difference like i'm eating my hair now it will make all the difference commit everything to the lord um and then number 15 is that prayer and fasting are powerful I cannot tell you how much prayer and fasting has helped me grow spiritually, has helped me grow mentally, has helped me be sane because, oh my word, I do not know what I would do with myself if I was not praying. I feel like, yeah, I do not know what my, my walk with the Lord would look like if I don't talk to Him because that's what prayer is. Um, and I don't listen for him to talk to me, which is why sometimes like like because fasting is Removing the pleasures of your flesh so that your spirit can be fed because I mean we spend hours and hours making our flesh happy We sometimes need to make the sacrifice to make our spirit happy, you know, like our spirit is a living being and wants to be taken care of as well and the food for the spirit is the word of god is time spent with god is his presence is holy spirit filling and reviving and refreshing and that is what has happened to me when i fast and pray like that is when i feel healed i feel heard i feel understood like my like my my, my spiritual senses are so heightened that after i fast like anything can happen i can be like oh that's god that's god like i can see god in everything like the little things he's just right there and it's so nice to do that i love it and then number 16 is that do not forsake the gathering of the saints um i put this one here because i feel like one of the biggest reasons why my faith is the way it is because i i prioritize the gathering of the saints more than anything like uh we laugh about this with one of my leaders but like i genuinely believe that as a child of god you do everything part-time in church full-time like does not matter who you are what you do where you're from but 
we always commit everything to the Lord and the Lord, you know, does all these amazing things through us and that's just incredible. So always, always and forever be in the presence of your brothers and sisters, be with your brothers and sisters, desire to be in the midst because unity commands a blessing because in that God is going to release his amazing power and his anointing and his glory. So definitely do not forsake the gatherings of the saint and then number 17 is that a good leader is a good disciple and is teachable so be curious and learn i think that's straight to the point like the reason why like because all the leaders in the bible were disciples before they were leaders like all of them whether they were disciples to god disciples to jesus the disciples holy spirit they were disciples before they were leaders and i think that's always so important because like a disciple obviously you have to imitate your teacher and your rabbi so there is people in my life that i genuinely replicate like i know that my youth pastor the one that's responsible for planet boom i replicate him and it's so funny because i always ask myself how does pastor john do all these things and then when i look into my life i'm like how do i do all these things and clearly it is the anointing that falls from him that overflows into the people that he's leading that gives us the grace that god has already like bestowed upon all of us that are under his leadership to be able to uh, hold all these multiple things and just be so dependent on God and see his presence and see him move it's so incredible yeah and then number 18 is that there's honestly a time for everything very simple ecclesiastics there is a time and a season for everything there will be seasons where you'll be happy seasons where you're sad seasons where you're glad seasons where you're not so glad and that is okay like accept that there's a time for everything and be in your season and like, be present right and then number 19 is that financial knowledge is golden knowledge I personally feel like it's so important to educate yourself about your finances. You need to be aware of your money. You need to be aware how your money affects you. At the same time, how your, your generosity is related to your money and how you can use even the little money you have to honor and provide for the kingdom of God because it is his house, it is his home. You want to make sure that his glorious temple remains glorious. And then number 20, is that desperation is a dangerous heart posture that can cloud judgment I feel like I can speak so much in this but sometimes when we get too desperate for things that are not like healing like for things that are not necessarily positive but when we get too desperate for materialistic things we like our our judgment is clouded and the enemy just sees an opportunity to infiltrate and the enemy sees an opportunity to come and attack so do not give the enemy that opportunity and then the last one number 21 you live your life today and not tomorrow so be present be in the moment enjoy every single time every single day is a good day even the moments where it's not good where just 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 be in the moment like one thing about jesus that i love is that he was always in the moment even though he knew the end like he knew that he was gonna like die like for me the interesting thing is i i never really know whether he knew if he was gonna be resurrected because I feel like he's human there was like I don't know like I don't know if this is like factual this is theologically theologic uh, theologically correct but um, there is nothing in scripture in the Gospels that I have found that insinuates that Jesus knew that he was going to um, resurrect like his flesh like was just didn't know that there was more afterwards you know and he knew that he had to die obviously but he, he knew that i just don't know whether he knew that he was going to be resurrected because he grieved so painfully and deeply but that's besides the point right just be present be in the moment enjoy yourself live your life because you're going to look back years and wonder where did all the time go and like i'm i know i'm young to a lot of people but i really have enjoyed being young and I love being young I used to hate it so much to be the youngest person in the room but God has shown me that in my youth 
in my youngest person mentality that is exactly where he needs me to be because it makes me meek it makes me humble it keeps me humble and it's like that one thing that reminds me that every single thing i've ever done in my life is by the strength and the grace of god and never a me thing it's never by my logic never by my smartness or you know it's not by my by power but it's by the spirit of god i hope that you learned something from all of these incredible incredible lessons that i have learned over the past 21 years that god has blessed me with on this earth don't forget to like comment share and subscribe i'm probably going to post this audio on my podcast as well because i do not have the strength to make a podcast this week when i've done so many so much editing i am exhausted i'm taking a break but anyway see you guys thank you